Going Down to South Park is proudly brought to you by the Four Finger Discount Network. It doesn't look like our protest is working. It'll work. It has to. Look, it's the president of the network. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Warsaw. I've prepared a statement for you on behalf of the network. <clears throat> F*** you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If there are any questions, you may direct them to that brick wall over there. Kick ass. Welcome to Going Down to South Park, the podcast where we have ourselves a time. This week we are here to review episode six of season one. It is titled Death. I am Dando. <laughs> and I am Guy. Very nice to be here talking all things South Park with my man Dando. Uh, before we begin, a shout out to Mr. Dando. He dropped by the house today. Uh, bearing gifts. What a dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't tell you exactly what it was. I will provide pictorial evidence. Put it up on the uh, Four Finger Discounts patrons page. Uh, but it was a pretty nifty little item. And also, he's um, paid for my Netflix for the next three months. So props <laughs> to you, Dando. Thank you very much, sir. Much, much obliged. I also have another gift on its way to you. It just hasn't, got, it just hasn't got here yet because, you know, pandemic. Australia Post not going too well at the moment. That is true. It's supposed to be here last oh. Thursday. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> that's, oh. Why, that's why I dragged out the birthday, because I was like, well, surely it's going to be here soon, and it still <laughs> wasn't here a week later, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck oh. it. I've got to give him the present. His birthday was like a week ago. I'm feeling overwhelmed, and now I think I've got to get you another present. No, Come no, no. I used, is- I used, you gave me a JB Hi-Fi gift voucher. I mean, what's the American equivalent of JB Hi-Fi? Like a Best Buy or something, I guess? Either way, it's it's just yeah. a department store that focuses. It used to focus on just movies, TVs, and music, but now it has all white goods and everything. But it does because physical media is dying. But I used your fifty dollars <laughs> gift card that you gave me to get one of my favorite Jack Johnson albums on vinyl of all time called In Between Dreams. Oh, nice! Bit of mellow Jack, no shoes. Yeah, that's it. Track Good one, vibes all round. Track one on that uh, on that album was played at our wedding. So good times had by oh. all. Nicola appreciated me getting in as well. So thank you for getting me that record. No worries. And speaking of birthdays, someone else's is coming up in the very near future. Whose? <laughs> My gorgeous <laughs> wife, Nicola's birthday is tomorrow, yes. Yeah. So by the time you hear this, she would have already turned 33. I, I, I do like the 12-day the period between my birthday and hers because I'm like, every day. So what's it feel like being married to an older man? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> Sugar daddy. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we've both hit the 3-3 three, three now. But uh, yeah, I still feel like, I, I don't know about you, Mr. Davis, but... 33, you haven't even hit your prime yet, have you? Well, what's the prime years? 40s? Mm, or do you reckon mid 30s? I think mid 30s, although for me it was in my 40s. Yep. I think, I, yeah, I, I sort of really felt like I hit my stride in then. And honestly, up until just recently, because uh, let's, let's not be shy about it, I am in my 50s now. What are you, 51, yeah? I am 52. I just 52. said 52 okay. on the last birthday. <laughs> and. I've got to admit, tying it back to uh, going back to going down to South Park, the podcast that we are here to discuss, Grandpa making that sound is pretty much the way I feel twenty four seven these days. <laughs> so the prime has passed, and now I'm into years. <laughs> well, on speaking of Grandpa, Grandpa Marsh in, in death, what did you think of this? So this was kind of like so Grandpa Marsh is like a more cruder version of Grandpa Simpson. Grandpa Simpson still. He gives off similar vibes, but he's more PC about it. He's just like, kill me. I want to die. <laughs> I, Abe Simpson is positively spry yeah. compared to Grandpa Marsh, who is basically just a husk of a man who wants to shuffle off this mortal coil ASAP. But I mean, he is 102 years old, so that would explain it. True, true. But uh, look, props to Parker and Stone for being kind of uncompromising about it and saying... Yeah, it kind of sucks being this old. I don't think I want to be around much longer. And admittedly, yeah. they they reverse that a little bit by the uh, by the end of the episode. But uh, it's it's funny. I mean, this looks like, and for the most part, is a fairly glib episode very in a lot touchy, of ways when it comes touchy to touchy subjects in this episode. But it's a very touchy subject. They handle it in a, in a quite a mature way. Mm-hmm. As well as the glibness of it. I mean, you know, the way it starts with him saying. Ah, kill me! <laughs> yeah. and, and Stan's got his great response. I'm not no. going to kill you, Grandpa. I'll get, I'll get in trouble. I'll get in trouble. That's the way. <laughs> I thought that. I thought that was brilliant. Um, but 
the way that all the adults are basically like <laughs> not touching this issue with vari- poles of varying lengths, I thought it was great. And yeah. uh, well, that's it was a good sort of insight into just society's opinion on euthanasia in the way everyone's like. Uh, I'm just. I'd, I'd rather just not talk about it. I, I. I don't know what's right, and what's wrong. I'd rather just not discuss it at all. It, if you don't know the stance of the other person that you're discussing it with, you're probably going to be very, very reticent about telling him how you feel about it. Unlike me, I mean, I, I tend to be fairly open about. It. I. I told Lou about. Um, I don't know how long into our relationship, but there's something came up about you know dementia or just. <laughs> the various indignities of, of old age, or that can befall people of old age. And I'm like- Dementia's the big one, though. It is, it is. And I mean, I have family, I have it in my DNA, apparently. Oh, okay. I, mean, I, I have family members who have, you know, suffered Alzheimer's and that kind of thing. Uh, and I said to Lou, I love you, and I want to spend a lot of time with you, but if I start <laughs> losing my dignity, I'm taking the express. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Now I don't I don't mean to sound glib about that either, but I mean I think it's very much a personal choice. Yeah, yeah. And what, what as you, as you were touching on before though, the way they handled it in this episode. So what Parker and Stone do a great job of is making the viewer aware blatantly of what their stance is on a particular subject, but they also always end it with, but we're aware there's another side to this story and we you know, we're not saying what we're saying is right. We understand mm. that it, it, it's just a matter of opinion. So don't fucking come at us. We think this, but we're aware that it's okay to also think that. And that's why I think they did yeah. a good job of this with having the great-grandpa arrive and say, you know, you shouldn't do it. As, as we were saying, the, a lot of the adult, adults in the show were like, not touching it with a 20-foot pole, not touching it with a 40-foot pole, not touching it with a 60-foot pole. Even Jesus. Even Je- Jesus has got the biggest pole of all. Mm. And meanwhile, the, the kids at near the very end of the episode, I've written down here, hey, good points, common sense by the kids. Of course, I did not write down what those good what those common sense points were, but you're being you're a bit more diligent than me. We'll probably get to that when we get to that. But I don't know. It's a very level headed show for a show that's also quite outrageous, isn't it? I think what they do here, and, and so the other subject in this episode was TV censorship. Yes, uh, the the story that would eventually go on to be the one for bigger, longer, and uncut. This is very much a dry run for bigger, longer, and uncut, isn't it? Yeah, I think what so with that storyline there is what they tried to get across. The message was that. There is a place for what people consider crude television because these shows aren't just crude jokes. They have a Hmm. point, they have a meaning, they have a purpose. And what South Park does is it actually, in a very, I use the word crude, in a very rough way, Hmm. they actually give quite a positive message. Like, for example, example like the, the gun control and the hunting in, in one of the previous episodes yeah. and the big gay ass, big gay boat ride, the acceptance and things like that. This is a show that people said was one of the worst shows on television, blah, blah, blah. The messages that, that Parker and Stone actually portray to their viewers are generally actually very positive. They're very positive people. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they're, they're expert smugglers. Yes. They're, yeah, they're, they're very good at smuggling thoughtful, positive messages. They're not out to just piss people off. They... I think what pisses people off is that they they are so clever and they're so good at what they do. Mm. And the people like, for example, Kyle's mother, Sheila, those the, the, what we now call the Karens of the world, they don't like South Park because they, to them, that's just crude television. But they don't take the time to actually watch South Park as portrayed in here. So what the message was, was the parents that try to get South Park off the air at the start there, they're trying to say, if you just pay more attention to your kids' lives as opposed yeah. to what they're watching on television... You mm-hmm. might have a better relationship with your kids, and your kids might be happier people. Yeah, and your kids might actually turn out to be better adjusted, yeah. more well-rounded people, Yeah, who won't be um, Mis- swayed or misguided by or, te- or television. Influenced or misguided, yeah, by what they see on TV. I mean, if you pay a little attention to your kids, says the man with no kids, <laughs> but, you know, what they're consuming, what they're taking in, you talk to them about it, make sure, hey, you get it – are you getting the right message from this? You know this is make-believe or you know that Cartman's the bad guy, right? He's not someone to, He's very, very funny, but he's not someone to emulate. You don't want yeah. to be like Cartman. Enjoy him, but don't be like him. And, of course, I think any halfway clever or decent kid is going to go, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's a similar thing with childhood obesity and the way a lot of parents blame McDonald's and all this for the fast foods for their kids being fat. I'm pretty sure the kids didn't buy the food. You bought yeah. the food. <laughs> yeah. Now, again, no kids, but 
I'm sure there are going to be times when a kid's going to be like, I don't want this plate of meat and vegetables. Mom, let's stop, get some McDonald's. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, you know, just keep hitting that, yeah, hitting, hitting the Mount Splashmore button over and over and over and over and oh, over. Oh, I've and been there with the KFC. Yeah, yeah. And, Dando, I'm sure you'll uh, agree with this. Sometimes it's easy to give in. Oh, I, I have given in. And that's why Elliot now, for a while, thought, oh, well, he'll cave eventually. So yeah. I had to, there come a day where we were looking at, I remember we were train spotting. Elliot loves to go looking at trains. Mm. And usually after we go looking at trains on the weekend, we get a cheeky little snack box on the way home from KFC. Mm. And this day we drove past KFC and Elliot's little three-year-old mind could not comprehend what was going on. He <laughs> was like, blew his mind. Yeah, he was like, Daddy, KFC. I was like, yeah, we're not getting it today, mate. For like 10 straight minutes. I want KFC. <laughs> and I just had to just power through and just pretend like I, I was just in my mm. own little world, just couldn't hear him. And he mm. was hysterical. But mm. the next time we went train spotting, I said, we're not getting KFC today, mate. He goes, okay, daddy, next time. I was like, I win. <gasps> See, parenting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you get the win, sometimes he gets the win, and that's yep. how life operates. You're, yeah. you're teaching him valuable life lessons, it seems. You've got to be kind to your kids, though, because one day they've got to wipe your ass when you can't do it for yourself. So just be kind to your children. and you got it, It's okay for the occasional snack box. Treat them yes. Treat them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Maccas has brought back the uh, the Wagyu beef burger, so I saw let's, that wrap today, yes. <laughs> yeah, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up, because I need a midnight snack. <laughs> so, Death, what did you think of the overall episode? Did This wasn't... I don't think the funniest episode that we've had to date, but it was a very important episode. The messages they had in this in this episode, like we said, they would go on to become mm. the, the story for the movie, the one with their TV censorship, because I think that's a... They loved the fact that that was more sort of them fighting back at their critics. Yeah. And because it was only a, one of the stories in this episode, they clearly didn't get to voice as much as they wanted to. It wasn't enough time, so they're like, let's do two hours on this. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Look, I, I had a lot of fun with this episode. I, I think you're right. I don't think it's, yeah, one of the funniest or, or most energetic that we've seen so far. Probably the most morbid, though. Pretty morbid, but with a delicate touch. I mean, I, props to Parker and Stone for not letting the weighty subject matter overpower the execution of it. Well, I love the way that Grandpa made Stan aware of how he feels. I thought it was so clever. Oh, the, the locked room in the end. Yeah, area. it's just like, yeah. it, 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 it was so tame in in the in yeah. the world of South Park but Sam was like ah oh, I understand now grandpa yeah. I do. <laughs> it's it, cheesy and lame but eerily soothing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh it, it was like that that was their way of getting across their message of why mm. shouldn't these people be allowed to make their own decision about whether they should be here or not would you want to live in a world like that and Sam's like no you're right grandpa yeah yeah so um yeah a, a lot of deep ish mm-hmm. stuff in it I'll, I won't so it's completely deep, but it's uh, it's wading into the depths, combined with just a lot of toilet humour. <laughs> yeah. Which, look, and I'll admit, I think we've talked about fart jokes in the they past. Ha- they hand it up, though, because that's what I was trying to get the message across. That we can still have plenty of toilet humour, but still be a good show. Oh, yeah. We've spoken in the past about fart jokes. I'm, I think you're quite pro-fart jokes, and I'm like... Oh, it depends. I felt like, even by like episode four or five, they were getting tiresome in South Park. Look, I, I'm... <laughs> I feel a bit the the way about Terence and Philip, the way I feel about Sideshow Bob. Uh, we just did a, a Sideshow Bob episode of the Four Finger Discount uh, podcast. And I like Sideshow Bob fine, but I could live without him. And much the same with Terence and Philip. But then, having said that, when Terence and Philip show up, I'm invariably, oh, actually, no, they, they're kind of fun. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, this is pretty funny. Yeah. Let's not be, uh, let's not kid around. Uncle Fucker, one of the greatest songs in the history of film. <laughs> 100%. I've I've always said that I just nearly laughed myself into a brain yeah. embolism <laughs> the first time I saw that at the cinema. I was just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, hearing, and yeah, just got the absolute giggles. I was laughing like a thorough maniac. It was so, so funny. <laughs> So what was your favourite moments from death, Mr. Davis? Well, I mentioned toilet humour before. Um, I think I was about to say I'm not huge on fart jokes or toilet humour. For some reason, it really tickled my funny bone here. Yeah, I mean, uh, all the diarrhoea sounds and shit-ass sounds and all the little sort of... 
the, the squirts. Yeah, all, that, <laughs> yeah, all those great sounds. And, and also people just riffing on the various shits they were taking, just the euphemisms or that, like, dropping dropping the kids off at the pool or um, all that kind of business. I thought was just hilarious. But I'll tell you what the funniest – what I thought the funniest part of this episode was, and it, it struck me as a very Parker and Stone moment, mm-hmm. uh, was – I think the character's name was John Warsaw, the yeah, head of oh, the Cartoon yeah. Central. He's um, you know, sort of giving his statement. <laughs> they like, fuck you. <laughs> but then when he's walking back in, just drops his pants and moons them. But the look on his Big face smile. as he's doing it. <laughs> Basically, Hilarious. I, I, in my notes, I'm like, this is Matt and Trey in 1999 or 1997. It <laughs> it's very much them. So uh, I just thought that was wonderful. Because, you know, because those people, all the Karens, as we say now, all the Karens of the world, mm. if they all got into a big room in 1997 and they came out and did a speech, Matt and Trey, this is exactly how they would have handled it. Here's what you have to say. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> just turn around, pull their pants out <laughs> and walk out. Because who cares? They don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> they don't matter. Go mm. go fucking go worry about what your children are doing as opposed to what they're watching on television. Fucking just go yeah. go parent, you know? Yeah, and if they're watching something that you disapprove of on Turn television, the TV off. you know, be a parent. Exactly. Talk to them and say, I think you might be a little bit young for this, you know, or I think, you know, <laughs> you're eight and you're watching South Park, you should maybe let's give it a couple of years. I know you that everyone else in the schoolhouse is watching it, but I prefer you didn't, and you know, I, I don't know how how good an eight year old's debating skills are, but they might be like, "Big man," <laughs> at which point you surrender. <laughs> so, if my mum, Marsha Dando, is able to make me, Brendan Dando, a child of the nineties, not be able to watch a Simpsons episode for six years, I think a, any parent is able to stop their child. If a parent can stop their child from watching The Simpsons in the nineties, then anything mm. is possible. Yes. <laughs> Marsha Danda, what a hero. <laughs> and if she didn't do that, I don't think Four Figure Discount would have even existed because that's oh my where my God. passion and love for the show exists. Because I, I had to do like all this catch up. I was like, the, the show was on like season seven by the time I was allowed to watch it. And I was like, holy shit. I- it's like a fucking Marty McFly kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I also enjoyed the... Um, so Cartman's cracking the shits because grandpa was making fun of him, blah, blah, blah. And then Stan offers him food. Ooh, it's that case. Oh, yeah, good day. <laughs> yeah, Snacky gives me good. <laughs> Just bribing him food, yeah. So, I, But I also enjoyed the... Uh, I got John, which is spoiling one of my trivia questions, by the way. That was his name, John Warsaw. <laughs> and um, and, and the, 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 the various jokes on the riff on the pooing. Mm. I love uh, Garrison's. What was Garrison? Something about apple. Apple squirts, was it? Green apple, green apple splatters. Green apple splatters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I, I just want to look this up as well because what you're saying is the cartoon central name John, guy, John, John War- Warsog. Okay, well, I think the actual head of Comedy Central was John Herzog. Ah, well, we'll say it then. Let's have we'll a look. I should say. Let's have a look. Doug Herzog. Well, still the same last name. Obviously, that's a take on him. But the, it's just yeah. a credit to the show to think that they're six episodes in and they're already having to make a show about how they're fighting back at their critics. Six episodes in. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's also that's also a credit to how the show is made because if this show wasn't made the way they do it, just so last minute, they mm. wouldn't be able to fight back at their critics. They have to. They would have already had. If it was The Simpsons, the first season would have been finished. Parents would have you know cracked the shits about it, and then in season two they would have done an episode. But they were just like, nope, fucking bang, you Quick, said something. Turn around, last yeah, absolutely, yeah, so good. Okay, now let's try to get an answer from someone who's not a complete retard. All right, trivia. My first question has been spoiled by yourself, so you give me yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay. Um, what kind of flower does Terence offer Philip? A tulip? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> My next question is, Stan, not Stan, um, Randy says to keep the thermostat under what? 70 degrees. Correct. Yeah. Who cheated on the SATs? Oh, who cheated on the SATs? Can you give me some context? It's the, the call into Jesus and Pals. Oh, damn. No, I'm not going to get that name. Oh, it's <laughs> Mike? M? So that's of M. That's the caller. Oh, so it was his son. Uh, actually, his uh, his nephew. Nephew. Damn, no, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Martin from Aston Park called into yeah. Jesus and Pals to talk about his nephew, Little Gregory. Little Gregory. Yes, okay. Mm. My <laughs> next question is, my final question, who started in the show, She's the Sheriff, that replaced Terrence and Philip? That's Suzanne Summers. Mm. 
<laughs> uh, I can give you one more question. All right, like. hit me. Okay. How many people are eaten by lions annually in Africa? Oh, I know this. It is 400. In fact, it's over 400. Damn yeah. it. Incorrect. Oh, no, 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 no. That's... Well, at least 400. Well, we'll pay that. We'll pay that. <laughs> we will pay that, yeah. I love the way they ended this episode, too, of just like classic like TV family. Oh, silly old grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> 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 but Parker and Stone love that. I mean, um, I was watching, the, of course, the um, Pfizer chat with Matt and Trey prior oh, to the shit. episode. Oh, the, okay, yeah, yeah, the, the episode, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with old Scratch and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That joke never gets old. No. That old scratch is just, you know, multiple dogs, sometimes different dogs in the same uh, in the same fireside chat. But something I really, really love is just the listing faces that uh, Matt. Matt and Trey yeah. put on. Yeah. The, the, the or sort of each other. Yeah, that's sort of the, <laughs> You're not watching that. This is audio, folks, not, yes. video, not video, but I'm doing the, the – um, that was my Matt Stone one. Just the, 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 adoring, the adoring stares into nothingness. Yeah, yeah, or when they're trying to look really serious and just like – yeah, really good. I think what we should do for the patrons is we should do reviews on all of those uh, little fireside chats. I think we will do a special episode, maybe just we'll crunch all of those into one perhaps. I think something else we should do, mm-hmm. if anyone wants us to review basketball. Oh, man, I'd be all about that. I've got a basketball jumper on its way. <laughs> oh, for real? And a basketball uh, T-shirt, but it's designed to look like a vintage, like 1990s shirt it's like all like it's like oh, okay. scratched and stuff but it's like basically a basketball <laughs> shirt i should do you like basketball i i haven't watched it in years but oh. i really enjoyed it when i uh, when yeah. i saw it it's, we actually we should probably do the whole parker stone yeah orgasmo you know, everything yeah orgasmo cannibal i don't know if, it, if there's a book of mormon production or staging anywhere online but i think i'd be interested in doing that have you but, not seen uh, it live no oh wow yeah you gotta do oh, that oh, has oh, it come, wow. has, it's been to australia surely it has yeah Man, I missed it. Yeah, I saw it on the West End in London. It's fantastic. Oh, okay, fancy pants. <laughs> the the perks of being married to a British girl. <laughs> but that is trivia for death. Uh, we'll be right back after this short break with our full in-depth review of the episode. If you're a fan of everything we do here at Four Finger Discount, you can show your support by joining the family at patreon.com slash fourfingerdiscount. Here you'll get ad-free early access to all of our shows, Zoom calls with Guy and myself, as well as bonus podcasts such as Tales of Futurama and Guy on Springfield, where we go back and revisit classic episodes from the first 10 seasons. So go ahead and join the family today at patreon.com slash fourfinger discount. The original air date of death was September 17th, 1997. As we record this on September 15th, it's almost 24 years to the day that this episode came out. I feel very old. <laughs> I am very old. So. so I was, I would have been nine when this came out then. Yeah, crazy. Okay, I was probably in my late 20s. Yeah. Were you, were you in like the wheelhouse then for South Park? Was it, you and your friends, was it a big deal at the time? Or did was, was it the idea of, ah, oh, it's a cartoon, I'm not watching that? Uh, I'd heard enough about it that I was into it. Yeah, I think you said you saw a cartoon on the front page of the magazine and that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I actually did put up that picture whether it was the cover of Rolling Stone or the cover you of did, Spin. Yeah. yeah, but the uh, the piss take of the Janet Jackson one where yeah. someone's cupping her breasts from behind and instead it's someone's cupping Cartman's boy boobs. Um, yeah, but I, I think we've talked about this in the past. I mean, there'd been enough hype about the show, about Parker and Stone, and about the show's approach and sense of humour. I was like, oh, I'm keen to check this out. And... Uh, yeah, I, I was not disappointed when uh, when I first started watching it. Enough to keep on watching and to look. I'm 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 always interested when a new South Park season kicks off. I'm like, what do you got for me, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some seasons are better than others, but I like the way the show has evolved. I like the directions they've gone in. I like how unafraid they are. I mean, like we've said uh, in previous episodes, they've signed this incredible, you know, multi. Well, close to billion dollar deal. Yeah, you know, they basically they've got fuck you money now, so they can do what they please. Good and on them. I think because they've just earned the respect of all of their fans. That even when something's not that great, you still give it a go. Oh yeah, I think they've got enough runs on the board. Yeah, you almost feel like you're friends with them. Yeah, whether it's you know bigger, longer, and uncut, or Team America, or Book of Mormon. Yeah, people recognise them as like this is legitimately 
not just legitimately funny, because sometimes what's funny is not necessarily good, yep. so to speak. This is legitimately good and is yeah. legitimately funny. So it's like, yeah, give these guys the respect they de- they deserve. Dare I say classy? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they somehow make crudeness classy. Yes. It's the it's the upper end of crudeness. <laughs> So the episode kicks off with the Marsh family singing happy birthday to old grandpa. It's his 102nd birthday. Indeed. How, the indignity of little birthday boy bib around oh, his neck. Yeah. Oh. He, just, he does not look happy at all. Nobody listens to it. <laughs> Nobody listens. To, this is, that's what happens whenever I say, that's Guy, the- you ever do a podcast today? <laughs> That's not even me imitating, uh, you know, <laughs> Grandpa Marsh. That's just me going, uh, we're almost done. Yeah. Bedtime. <laughs> that wagyu. <laughs> that wagyu. <laughs> McDonald's closes at 11. <laughs> so nobody listens to him because uh, he, like, he wants to die. He's, just, he's had enough, yeah. which is another story element to this episode in the sense that a lot of the people who are old, their family members just want them around almost for their own selfish wants as opposed to thinking of what this person themselves wants. It's like, no, but grandpa, I want I want my grandpa to be here. It's like, yeah. grandpa, grandpa doesn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. They don't really want to have to deal with the grief. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, they're putting it off as long as possible. I'm not going to lie. My nan, you could tell, when I'm like, you could tell she was sort of not doing well, but none of us really at the time wanted to acknowledge it. We're like, no. And then all of a sudden, it just bang! It just happened. She was just gone, yeah. and I'm glad it happened like that. We didn't get a, a, a it wasn't a slow, drawn out process. But I look back now and think, yeah, the signs were there. We probably should have been listening more. Mm. Because at, I'm not sort of afraid to say it because at, there was times where she literally would say to us, "I just wish I was dead now." And when she would say that, mm. I would almost go, "Ah, oh, Nan, don't talk like that. No, no one wants to hear that." And I'm like, "She's at the I look back now and go." She was really trying to tell us, you know, when she's yeah. willing to say, I don't want to be here anymore. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. It made my grief for her passing away easier because I was like, this is what she wanted, essentially, as morbid as that sounds. You know, she's in a better place now. Yeah, I think that's essentially what uh, people who say that are telling you. It's like, don't feel bad when I go. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. It's like, and, and you put your selfish needs in front of it and go, no, but I want mm. my nan to be around because, no, no. Now I've I've still got the memories. So and she's she's yeah. happier now. So that's that's the positive spin I put on her passing away. But it just hearing him talk about this, that's reminded me of my nan when she used to say that. Yeah. Mm. But uh Stan asks if he can go eat his cake in the living room because <laughs> his favourite show is about to come on T V. And uh it's, yes, it's, it's the baby terrible. show for babies, according to uh <laughs> the dreadful Shelley. Yes. <laughs> so she's uh Stan's mum says you must take grandpa as well. We then get introduced to the first episode, or the, not the first episode, but the first time we've seen Terence and Philip, and it is just mm. hilarious. <laughs> it is. It's also, it reminded me of The Simpsons in 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 a way that um, you watch early episodes of The Simpsons, season one or whatever, and, you know, Dan's got the different voice for Homer. Not that they haven't found their groove, but they haven't found the classic Simpsons voices yet. And Terence and Philip, they don't sound the way they sound later on. I think they, they I think, uh, Parker and Stone are still sort of working out the kinks. They sound a little more sort of English. They're there, but then yeah, you're right. They do sound English. They're there, but they're not quite there. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's not. Hey, buddy, don't call me buddy guy. <laughs> no, I mean that's what I think of when I think of Terence and Philip. Um, apart from Uncle Fucker, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, this. Um, oh, don't get me wrong. This is still very, very funny. But this is very much Terence and Philip 1.0. And now back to Terence and Philip. Hey, Terrence, I think I have to fart. Wait, before you do, pull my thumb. (laughs) I remember my mum didn't know what South Park or really what Terrence and Philip was at the time, right? (laughs) And I remember my mate, Michael Culver, walking up. (laughs) It was in the kitchen at our old house in Norlane. I'll never forget it. Stand in the kitchen. And he walks up and he goes, Hey, Dando, I think I'm going to fart. And he just farted on me. And my mum was like... What the fuck just happened? <laughs> you know, like we're, and we both thought it was hysterical. And my oh, mom was like, Michael sounds like a champion. Yeah. Hey, Dando, I think I'm going to fart. And he, he farted on me. We thought it was the, the peak of comedy. And my mom had no idea what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is good. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Grandpa tries to shoot himself. Pretty, in- like, it's crazy. Like, he literally just tries to shoot himself in front of Stan. Then offers Billy $1 to shoot him. I love the fact that that gag paid off at the end as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
But <laughs> Sam says he won't do it because, as you mentioned, I'll get in trouble. What a line that is. <laughs> I'm not killing your grandpa. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no great sort of moral concerns or ethical, yeah. you know, dilemmas about it. Like, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. What have the youth of today come to? They won't even kill their own grandpas. Another line that pays off later on because he killed mm. his own grandpa. Kyle and Ike are then watching Terrence and Philip. Hey, Terrence, now that you've farted, I think I might fart too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you farted. <laughs> Kyle Bobby, what are you watching? Hey, Philip, would you like a flower? I sure would, Terrence. Alrighty then, here's a tulip. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's horrible. Dude, it's Terrence and Philip. Take that, you stupid dick. What did he say? You're an asshole, Philip. <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> Young man, you are not to watch that show anymore. It's immature toilet humor. But everybody watches Terrence and Philip. Oh, really? Is that so? Oh, no, Philip. Looks like you're about to fart. You're exactly right, Terrence. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love the. What, 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 what? Yeah. Like, that, that's what, okay, what, catchphrase. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sheila. Yeah. Sheila Brolovsky. Says that he can't watch it anymore. Then Cartman is watching it. How great is his reaction? He just laughs. Sweet. The reason is sweet. It just makes my day. It's the greatest. Oh, yeah. And I just love how oh, I keep forgetting Mrs. Cart- Leanne. Mm-hmm. Is you know, she's yeah, just, Leanne, the yeah. wor- just the worst enabler. Because, I mean, what? Cartman's already got like a bag of cheesy poofs. Next woman, she's bringing out like a tray of cookies. It's like, no wonder he's a little fatty. Yeah. <laughs> she says that Carl's mother called and said, this show will make you a potty mouth. Carl's mom's a daddy Jew. <laughs> God. We also get the first, in this episode, the first Carl's mom's a stupid bitch. Mm. Which would later become a show-stopping uh, musical number. What a routine that is. Oh, that's marvellous. I know, kids <laughs> around the world, it might sound a little bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> That bit is just like the peak. That just is so good. Yeah, but just actually the end of it. Cat's mum is a big fucking bitch. I said she's a bitch. She's a fucking bitch, Cat's mum. <laughs> <laughs> turns, uh, turns around and says, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, fuck. It, it's, a, it's a dance. I really meant Cat's mum. He's just like flushing. <laughs> it's fucking so good. Oh, uh, I need to go back and watch that. Mm. Oh, man. My record hasn't arrived yet. I bought the... um. The soundtrack on oh. vinyl yeah, it hasn't arrived yet. I'm very excited for that. I've got it on CD around here. Yeah. and uh, Yeah, I <laughs> used to play that a lot. Mm-hmm. Grandpa then writes on Stan's list. <laughs> he, won't do it. he won't kill Grandpa. I love the way, in fact, he's even misspelled Grandpa. You pompous son of a whore. I'm like, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it's your daughter you're talking about. Talking about yeah. <laughs> We're now at school. All the kids are annoyed with Kyle because his mum called their parents and said that they're... Uh, they can't watch Terrence and Philip anymore because it's um, mm. it would make them a potty mouth. It can't make the, the period joke here, but same time once a month that she's always upset, <laughs> always and he always gets screwed. Then Mister Garrison comes in and he's also been speaking to uh, Sheila as well, and he sort of go, about to go on a rant, not a rant, but just sort of explain to the kids why Terrence and Philip is no good. This is basically I love this because as he's explaining what essentially South Park is. Kenny's in the toilet doing thunderous <laughs> shits. <laughs> Trying to explain it. You know, toilet humour isn't funny, as we're laughing at toilet humour. Indeed, yeah. I mean, the kids love Terrence and Philip because it's toilet humour. Yeah, I mean, and uh, and we love South Park because of its, because of his toilet humour as well. I mean, the explosive diarrhoea. Well, that's the... I've got here, explosive diarrhoea. If you ever want to get out of work, use those two words. No one will ever <laughs> question it. No one will ever ask you how you went the next day. It's just, no worries, mate. Uh, at the risk of sounding insensitive or a little incorrect, it is the male version of girl problems. Girl problems. Oh, later that's times. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we're not, we're not, we're not comparing that. We to are not conflating diarrhea. the two things. No. <laughs> but that's our that's our way of. Once that's said, no more questions are asked. It's just yes. right your way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's the would you like three days your, off? <laughs> it's the ace up your sleeve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back when you're not shitting your pants. But you can only use it maybe twice a year. Mm. How many times have you used explosive diarrhea or something of that? I've used bad burrito at bad least burrito. once. Yeah, I think you've t- you've said that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You used it at pop culture. You said once. I used the pop culture once. Um, I don't know if I've used it anywhere else. I probably used to get out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you just send me. I'm like going into a podcast today. You send me a, a, an emoji of a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> 
burrito and a burrito. What's the like the little devil face? Up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I understand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but um anyway, so yeah, Kenny's um Kenny's having a rough time in the toilet there. So I read on the wiki page that this was the first and only time that the classroom has a toilet and it was purely used for this gag, so you could hear Kenny in the toilet whilst <laughs> I was about to say, I mean I don't recall a toilet ever next to a classroom in all my years of education. No, not at all. <laughs> So then he suggests that you should never watch Terrence and Philip ever again. This is where Stan asks if it's okay to kill your grandpa if he wants you to. What What do you mean? My grandpa keeps asking that I kill him all the time, and sometimes I wonder if I should. Well, then you should. I think that a person has a right to die if they want to. Really? Yeah. There's this guy named Jack Leborkian that goes around and murders people that ask him to, and he doesn't get in any trouble at all. Wow. Hey, maybe we could get him to kill cars, Mom. So is it okay to assist somebody with suicide, Mr. Garrison? Uh, Stan... I'm not touching that one with a 20-foot pole. We come back from commercial and Cartman is having Terrence and Philip withdrawals. He just he can't live without yeah. it. <laughs> Stan, Stan says, you know, come to my place. My parents weren't spoke, I haven't spoken to Kyle's mum yet, so we can, um, we can all watch it at my place. I'm pretty sure that's what... Is that why he says it? Or is he saying that the parents are going to be at the PTA meeting, maybe? I think so, yeah. yeah, I, think, yeah. I think Sheila's organised a uh, PTA meeting. Yeah, so you can all come to my place and watch it. That's right. But he says, but unfortunately, my grandpa will be there, but it's okay. They didn't ask Chef... About assisted suicide as well, and he ain't touching that one with a forty foot forty foot pole. pole. Yes, and I, I like that the the line of why won't anyone talk about this? Hmm. That's a really good line because no one. I feel like people are more open to talk about it now because it is legal in some places. But yeah. nineteen ninety seven, people just do want to talk about it. It was just like no, no, similar to mental health, which I'm glad people do, but in particular male mental health, and it's. M- Mental health with men still isn't quite there yet, but no. now I feel like men are more open to acknowledge that it's okay for us to cry, it's okay for us to feel sad about things, it's okay for not to not be tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think one of the most interesting and worthwhile things that's been done in that regard is uh, yeah, sort of the destigmatization of seeking help in terms of uh, in it's terms okay of to, mental it's health. It's okay to and, be and, sad. And basically, it's like, mate, if you broke your leg. You know, you'd go see the doctor, wouldn't you? Or, you know, your car's not working, go see the mechanic. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm putting on the dumbass Ocker voice here. Using those kinds of analogies, like, if your car's not working, take to the mechanic. If you're not feeling 100% upstairs, go talk to someone about it. It'll sort you out. I mean, putting it in a... It's always a lot more complicated than, here's a problem, here's a solution, because it's a... Pro- you know, dealing with mental health issues is often a process. It's not really like a Band-Aid kind of thing. It's a, you, don't get a pres- you don't get a prescription and be right in three days. No, not really. But using that kind of analogy or that kind of comparison, I think, is something that has, off- has, has really helped a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of men. Yep. And women anyway. as well. And women, of course, yeah. We're now at the PTA meeting and they show an episode of Terrence and Philip, which is hilarious. I love that Stan Marsh is with, oh no, Stan, uh, Randy. It's Randy. Our, it's our first sort of insight into the Randy that we love. That's what I've, I've got written in here. It's a very, an early glimpse of Randy's dopiness, which, yeah. you know, honestly, I can't wait till we get to these later season where Randy just goes all in. I can't you wait know, till I mean, the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually had a dream about, well, a, something similar the other night. Would you like to hear about this? Is it going to contain the word, the M word? No, well, it won't. Okay. But it could, if you know what I mean. I had a dream that I was on this game show hosted by the very affable Mark Fennell. You know who that is? No. Okay, he used to review movies on Triple J. Now he's kind of fashioning himself as the go-to host, uh, the, the young host. You know, I think he hosts like a current affairs show on SBS. He host their reboot of Mastermind, does a lot of podcasts, very, very media savvy. Good guy. I mean- What's his name again, about- sorry? Mark Fennell. Mark Fennell, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good guy. Met him a couple of times. Um, anyway, he's presenting this thing. Um, and the question was, and you know, it's being, there's a live studio audience and I know it's being taped to be broadcast on TV. And I think the question he asked me was something like, what is the most offensive term for African-Americans? I'm like, I, I don't think I want to say that on television, Mark. <laughs> and did you? I didn't. I, I think I eventually said, probably motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew what the most offensive term was, and I don't like that word in any way, shape, or form. I find it, a, it is a disgusting and de- dehumanising uh, term 
Uh, and then someone, some weird fan of Mark Fennell's tried to cut off a lock of his hair and Mark Fennell punched him so hard he burst into flame. What the hell kind of shit are you eating to make you have dreams like this? It's, I was, it was that beef wagyu burger from Mac's, <laughs> the midnight snack. Oh man, that's crazy times. Did you Indeed. win the game show at least? I think it all just descended into chaos after that. <laughs> I was gonna say it. And I think the fact that I didn't want to say the N word probably <laughs> didn't uh, didn't work in my favour. The best part about that Wheel of Fortune scene with Randy is the cameraman who sort of like moves out from the camera as he's <laughs> as they're waiting for Randy's answer. <laughs> oh man, can't wait till we get to that. Anyway, a little tease for what's to come here on going down to South Park. We're only at episode yeah, six. But all, but also, you know, just I thought this is America. Sorry, funniest thing ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you do, by the way want to choose a particular episode of South Park or the movie or anything for us to review, you can sign up to Patreon and choose that as one of your tiers. And you have the ability mm. to say, hey, Guy and Dando, I want you to choose something from South Park. It doesn't have to be South Park. It can be anything. It can be any movie or TV show that you want us to review. And we have mm. to do it because you chose, to, you chose it. We have to. Yeah. We've we got no say in it. And you also get early access to this show and early access to all the other podcasts we do here at Four Figure Discount, including The Simpsons Show, do a Seinfeld show, Talking Seinfeld, Friends Podcast, and much, much more. And it's all for just as little as $1 per month. So I highly recommend it. It's a great way to support Ooh, the show and get Una. access to exclusive podcasts in return. Wow. That's some silky smooth spruiking there, Dando. Well done, mate. <laughs> Where were we up to? Was it, were we up to the Green Apple Splatters? Yeah, we were. We're very, yeah. very close to Green Apple Splatters, yeah, because uh, someone at, well, I think the there's a stomach flu going around, bad burrito going around because Kenny's got it's clearly passed it on to somebody. Or did he pass it on to Mr. Garrison? Yeah, but then I love it in New, I love it in New York later on. No, I got it from that little bastard Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but just the voice of Mr. Garrison. I got the green apple splatters. <laughs> it sounds like a good like uh, 90s punk album title. <laughs> Green Days, Green Apple Splatters. splatters. <laughs> they did bring out an album called Dookie. Green Apple Splatters yeah. is, you know, probably the the natural sequel. Exactly right. So then we get we're at Stan's house and all the kids are arriving as Grandpa is attending to shove a fork into an outlet. And uh, <laughs> no, they're not going to do it. He asks one of the friends to do it, and Cartman says, "Nope, I won't do that unless someone pisses me off." <laughs> That's one of my favourite. Co- oh, never kill anybody unless it piss me off. <laughs> Grandpa here goes to town. I humped her like a little bitch. I was like, oh, my grandpa. <laughs> Talks about digging up his grandma and rooting her as well and rooting his granddad. I was like, Jesus, this guy really wants to die. Didn't he say something about, he, you know, he, he rooted Cartman's mum, but also his dad, which is oh. leads in leads into what happens a bit later. I mean- Does he say his dad as well, does he? Yeah, that, pos- yeah, that, that so. is That is like a little seed plant, isn't it? A seed plant. So he knew all along, old grandpa. Billy, help Grandpa stick this fork in the outlet. No, Grandpa, I'll get in trouble. Kill me, goddammit. No, I can't even kill a deer. Well, then have one of your little friends do it. You can kill me, can't you? I would never kill somebody. Not unless they piss me off. Oh, is that a fact? Well, let me tell you something, Porky. Your mom was over here earlier, and I humped her like a little bitch. What? That's right. Grandpa! And then I dug up your great-grandma's skeleton and had my way with her, too. Hey! Choice piece of ass, your great-grandma. Hey, piece of crap! I'll kill you! That's the spirit, Tubby. Come on, Carmen, he's just trying to get to you. Don't talk about my mom like that! We can go watch Terrence and Philip in the kitchen. I ever tell you about the time I boofed your dad, fatso? Uh, I can't believe that son of a bitch! Here, Carmen, have some snacky cakes. Here's a snacky cake, get there. They decide to call Jesus' show, because he knows all, and uh, we get the first guy about his nephew <laughs> cheating. Also... Uh, that whole bit with the with the feedback, that's pretty much the start of every recording of our podcast where Dando's like, turn down your volume. Turn this off. Turn that up. Oh, move your camera. <laughs> adjust your settings. I can't see my settings. Are you signed into Zoom? Oh, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget my my nan again. I called her up and I was like, she's like, I can't hear the TV. I'm like, turn it up. She goes, I have turned it up. I'm like, you couldn't have turned it up because if you turned it up, you'd be able to hear it. She goes, I can't hear it. I'm like, is it muted? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, can you push the mute button? Which one's that? I'm like, the one that says mute. Oh, yeah, I pushed it. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. Oh, no, I can't see anything now. It's gone off. I'm like, what'd you push? She goes, the red one. I'm like, that's the power button then. <laughs> it's like, oh. who's on first? And then the, the follow-up to that was, well, how do I turn it back on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, good times. 
Anyway, so yeah, so the, what what were we up to here? Uh, uh, Jesus and Pals is uh, taking yes. the call from Martin from Aston Park about little Gregory who uh, cheated on his SATs. Cheating is lying. Lying is bad. Then Stan asks about assisted suicide, and Jesus doesn't want to touch it with a 60-foot pole. Even baby, even Jesus won't touch the euthanasia question. A good, a good little joke here. God damn it, I heard that. <laughs> Have you ever been told off for saying that? I once said Jesus Christ once, right? And this woman literally on the school bus, this woman literally turned to me. Not, not the school bus, but it was the bus that had school kids. She goes, mm. do not ever use the Lord's name in vain. I was like... Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> What's that? There's a great line in that movie, The Nice Guys, where um, I haven't seen someone. Nice guys, someone yeah. accuses Ryan Gosling. and said, "You took the Lord's name in vain." He goes, "No, I didn't take it in vain. I found it very useful." <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that's a good movie, The Nice Guys. The Nice Guys is a very, very good movie, and I highly recommend you check it out. I think it's on Netflix. This is where. Stan asks, can't we call Kyle's mum a bitch for the first time? Which, yeah, I just, it reminded me of the song so great. We're mm. watching Terrence and Philip. Then he's unaware that Grandpa's going to hold a rope. Well, he knows he's holding a rope, but he's not paying attention. Basically, what yeah. he's doing here is what the parents are doing as opposed to not watching their kids. Ah, uh, yeah. They're, they're off getting distracted doing their own thing as opposed to uh, actually watching their kids. But anyway, so he's watching they're, Terrence and Philip. They're very good storytellers in that yeah. regard, or very, or very good at sort of story structure. I think uh, it's something they respect as well. I th- they got that episode later on down the line with Mel Gibson, <laughs> and you know, mm. around the time of Passion of the Christ, and or maybe it's in, or maybe it's in the movie actually where they're bringing in all these people and like Michael Bay's like, then we got crash and explosions and all this shit, <laughs> and Mel Gibson coming and he's just nuts. Um, but some, or I think the studio guy says, well, Mel Gibson's batshit crazy, but he does know story structure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so good. But so this is where uh, Shelly walks in and catches them. She thinks they're trying mm. to kill Grandpa. They then go on the talk show. Who, who was this a takeoff of? The, the host? I don't know. It was I British. Don't know. Yeah, because it was sort of Britishy. Yeah, it was Britishy. Yeah, but they, you know, they said they they were doing it because they're watching Terrence and Philip, which adds mm. fuel to the fire, gives them a reason to try and get the show taken off the air. Kyle's mom and the crew all then said they're going to march down to Cartoon Central in New York and mm-hmm. and protest, get more quality TV like Full House. Yeah. Anywhere you look, everywhere there's a heart. Oh, something like that, isn't it? Is that the words? <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched a full episode of Full House. Well, I used to watch it when I was a kid. Yeah. See, my mum was very much, she sort of raised me on things mm. like Welcome Back Cotter and yeah. uh, The Brady Bunch and those old school just like happy family and good wholesome sitcoms. Yeah. And I think that impacted my, because uh, I, I, I remember watching Full House and I, I think that made me more of like a... um. I don't know, not a nurturing person, but a more understanding person. Watching those corny shows, mm-hmm. I, when I was like in year seven, year eight, most kids are just pricks at that age. They're just oh, mean yeah. to everybody. But I was also always just that guy that was like, even when people were bullying other kids, I was like, if it was my friends, I'd be like, no, 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 let's not treat these people like this. That's not cool. <laughs> and I think it's because I watched corny shows like Full House and Bob Saget yeah. teach me a few things. <laughs> <laughs> the fu- and the funniest thing is, Bob Saget, when he's not on film. Oh, he's a bad person. <laughs> is is just a oh, bad, fil- bad man. He, well, he, well, he's filthy. He's not a bad person. Yeah. He's filthy. No, no. He's a filthy, filthy comedian. Oh, I think you gave me the stomach flu, Mr. Garrison. No, no. It was that little candy bastard that gave it to me. Whoa, Mayor, are you uh, making gravy in there? <laughs> I just had a brown baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I always remembered the mayor saying that she gave birth to a brown baby boy, but I couldn't remember what episode it was. And when they started mm-hmm. going to the toilet, I was like, oh, it's going to be this one. That, <laughs> that, that line just seemed to stick with me. The kids are now running crazy at Stan's house because there's no parents around because they're all too busy with their own agenda as opposed to parenting their kids. Grandpa shows Stan what it's like to actually be him and plays Enya's track. What's the track called, mm. Mr. Davis? Oh, I, it sounds like Orinoco Flow. I don't think they got the original Orinoco Flow. I think it's sort of a... a Sail away, it said on the... Oh, okay. It says, well, sail, it says sail away on the um, subtitles. Oh, okay. Well, I, th- I honestly think the song might be called Sail Away, brackets, Orinoco Flow, or uh, Orinoco right. Flow, yes. Orinoco, brackets, Sail or- Away. Yes, that's exactly what you just said there. Orinoco <laughs> Flow, brackets, Sail Away. I've only ever known it as Sail Away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's the actual Sail Away. I think it's like a version or like a uh, like a uh, riff on it or a piss take of it. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely Enya-esque. I don't and- Honestly, India's not all that bad. <laughs> you know, not not for everyone, but... Uh, 
Uh, we've discussed this in the past, though, like where when they take the piss out of somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't like it or don't like them. Mm. It's just sort of like a, just a tongue-in-cheek thing. But yeah. like, what, that, that song, though, that they're playing, was that a well-liked song? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Sail Away was a bit of a hit. Mm-hmm. And I think it was the kind of music that you would hear if you were, like, going to a day spa or something. <laughs> yes, okay. Very relaxing. Yep. Calming. So, as a result of this, Stan agrees to kill Grandpa. We're now getting the president's, uh, he's prepared a statement. John Warsaw comes out. Fuck you. Got any questions directed to that brick wall? <laughs> <laughs> and just drops his pants, gives him the full moon and a big S- grin. Such glee. What That's a lord. Just the face is just like, what are you going to do about it? Oh, nothing. That's right. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that the president of Comedy Central at the time, Doug Warsaw, or D- Dog, Doug Herzog. Doug Herzog. Yeah. Do you think he would have defended South Park at the time? Because I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think he would have. I mean, apparently- well, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to defend the Golden Goose, right? You do. You do. And I mean, I think his background was MTV and VH1 and all that kind of okay, stuff. So, so it was with he the, probably the times, viewed himself yeah. as a bit of a bit of an anti-establishment kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, fuck the establishment. The, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm a suit, but I'm a cool suit. I'm yep. working with the uh, working with the cool kids, and you know, I got their back. <laughs> I, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cartman's mum's going to drop some kids off at the pool. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the kids all try to kill Grandpa with the cow. I love the bar- Officer Barbary rocks up. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> oh, and written on his car, I mean, not to protect and serve, but to patronise and annoy. Do you think this was their way of saying that Barbary assessed the situation and agrees with euth- euthanasia and was like, I'll, I'll allow this. And drive I th- I think it's more. I think he's an eighty foot pole guy. I think yes. he just doesn't want to get involved either. Yeah, that's true. He just doesn't want to get involved. He's like, he doesn't agree with it. Doesn't disagree with it. He's just like mm. you just do what you're doing. I didn't see it. Yeah, disregard, disregard. <laughs> We're now at the network. Did you notice that every time that the Statue of Liberty blinked? I did. Yeah. <laughs> you, now this guy here, I've got here in my notes. Kenny's dad sacrifices himself, Mister McCormack. Right. Mm. It's not Kenny's dad though. It was just confusion. It was just. The, uh, I think it was Trey said, no, no, there's, you know, just because it's Kenny's, he's got the same last name as Kenny, doesn't mean that it's his dad. There right. are other people in this town with the same last name. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but but makes a fairly common name. It's, but it's, it's funny though, because that made me think, so like on The Simpsons, right, you never get somebody of the same last name if they're not related. Because like, there, there's no, mm-hmm. another, surely you'd think in Springfield, there's another Simpson who isn't related to The Simpsons, but it's never happened. Yeah. I guess it would just be confusing for the viewer, particularly younger viewers. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether they wanted this guy to be Kenny's dad at the start and then backtracked afterwards, but I, I did think it was funny that they just slingshot themselves into the building for nothing. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> kill, killing themselves for absolutely nothing. And, and just splattering and staying there. Using yeah. violence to try and get violence or get crudeness off TV. Yeah. Mm. This, this is where Barb Reddy sees the kids, lets them go, and then the death arrives and he starts chasing the boys. They call their parents for help, but they don't listen to them at all because they're, you know, they're busy looking after their children's well-being you by mean, not being around. Yes. <laughs> looking, after their, yeah, looking after their kids' best interests when they are, in fact, not looking after their kids' best interests. <laughs> you know, I think that if parents would spend less time worrying about what their kids watch on TV and more time worrying about what's going on in their kids' lives, this world would be a much better place. Yeah, I think that parents only get so offended by television because they rely on it as a babysitter and the sole educator of their kids. Totally, dude. Good point, man. Oh, by the way, so we had a someone sent through a link to a website that has everything that Kenny oh, says. Oh, yeah. I wonder what his spiel says here. Should we look it up? We probably should. We probably should. What was the website? All right. You do what, that. The website should be called whatkennysaid.com. That would be the mm. obvious one. All right, so here we go. We've got everything that Kenny says in this episode. So after he gets to school from being late to having diarrhea, Kenny raises his hand and says, I have to go fart. <laughs> after Kenny says, number one, Mr. Garrison, Garrison says, didn't you just go? And Kenny says, I did, I did, but I've got to go shit. But in this <laughs> part here, he says, well, what I think, basically, if you let the decision of what you watch to be under the parents' control, television sucks. Television sucks because parents get offended when they're <laughs> a babysitter for their kids. Doesn't really make sense there. Oh, 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 says here in brackets. Couldn't decipher that part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, he's like, yeah, he's making a good point, as the kids uh, agree with here. Hmm. 
I, I do like that Kenny. They portray him as like the the poor kid, the, the you know the, the the welfare child, but he seems to be like the most intelligent of the lot, yeah. or the most the most street smart at least. Absolutely, yeah. Got a lot of time for Kenny. I, I remember at the end of well, spoilers for bigger, longer, and uncut, but uh, I love at the very end how you actually see him take his hood off and says goodbye, you guys. Like a, yeah, looks like a regular kid, and he says bye, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's actually kind of touching. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that being like a big moment when I was a kid. Seeing Kenny without his hood on, I was like, we're going to remember this for the rest of our lives, guys. <laughs> Let's hold hands. <laughs> and then he gets dragged off to heaven by a couple of big boobed angels. Yeah, legend. <laughs> we come back from commercial and death is chasing him on a tricycle. Was it a tricycle or a penny farthing? It looked like a penny farthing. That's a tricycle because oh, okay. Trey used to enjoy draw- uh, drawing death riding a tricycle at- when he was younger. <laughs> so that's the only reason. <laughs> oh, cool. It's, it's, wouldn't it be great to just be having your own show and be able to do cool shit like that? Mm. Like, it's death chasing children on a tricycle. It's amazing. But he stops to watch Terrence and Philip uh, in the window. Uh, th- those days are long gone, you know, when you stop by, walk past the window and playing something mm. on the TV. But uh, they're all, they all start gathering around and watching it and laughing together. Actually, that this TV show is bringing everyone together. <laughs> even, de- even death. Even death. Even death's into it. Because even death likes a good fart joke. Because, I mean, I must admit, I chuckled to just, oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, either Terrence or Philip. Oh, you farted. <laughs> like you were surprised. <laughs> yeah, you're surprised. <laughs> you're just laughing at it regardless. Yep, so, so good. good. <laughs> the parents are still killing themselves in New York. And the president of the network finally comes out with a new statement, says he's going to take Terrence and Philip off the air due to all the shit that they And they actually show <laughs> the shit. <laughs> this is a giant pile of shit. And he says he's going to replace it with, she's the sheriff of Suzanne Summers. The guy, so there was a guy that said, wait a minute, I want to hear what he has to say. And as soon as that statement's finished, they end up slingshotting him into the building. He dies as well. For no reason at all. <laughs> he says, and Sheila says, we can finally return to normality. Terrence and Philip is off the air. Death kills Kenny. The grandpa thinks it's very um, unfair though, doesn't he? Because he wants to die. Absolutely. The, the, the entire time he's been chasing death, saying, no, it's my turn, not his. Kill me, kill me. Then we get the great grandpa arrives. Who is haunting, by the way? He's terrifying. Yeah, no, he's very disturbing looking. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And he, he says to Billy, uh, which is Grandpa Marsh, <laughs> that you know he should never have done that because now he's stuck in limbo because I made you kill me before it was my time. You must die of natural causes. Just it's just this Trey and Matt just trying to cover their tracks. Going, it's aware we're aware, guys, that you know we've been very pro euthanasia. Here's the other point of view. Okay, <laughs> the kids then all go home. The parents arrive. The kids are all annoyed because they're now going to watch She's the Sheriff as opposed to Terrence and Philip. But Sheila doesn't like the language on this show either. What? what, what? So they have to, <laughs> they're going back to New York now to protest against this one. Indeed. By the way, She's the Sheriff, an actual show. Is it really? Okay. It is. Um, it was also ranked number 44 on TV Guide's 50 Worst TV Shows of All Time back in 2002. But um, it actually ran for something like... Uh, Hmm, let's see. From September 19, 1987 to April 1, 1989. Well, that's a good two or three seasons. Indeed. Um, Suzanne Summers, blonde bombshell and star of the hit sitcom Three's Company, came back to TV playing Hildy Granger, a young woman suddenly widowed with two children to support. Um, the commissioner of fictional Lakes County, Nevada, offers to appoint her sheriff, a job held by her husband until his depth. Dad death, pardon me. Let's see. She's forced to handle the daily problems of locals and tourists with extra trouble called by the four deputies on her staff. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> but the parents have all gone back to New York now to protest against she's the sheriff. What are the kids going to do? The kids don't know what to do. They're like, oh, well, now that Terrence and Phillips off here, what are we going to do? Michael says, smoking cakes kind of care. Or we, uh, we can go watch porn or things like that. I love that. You know, you, mm. you take this te- television show off the air, they're going to go do naughty shit in real life. Absolutely. Grandpa says he's going to Africa to hopefully get eaten by a lion. Ah, that's my silly grandpa. And just to cap it off, they end with a fart joke. (laughs) So this was, upon reflection, a very funny episode. Would you go on to say it's probably the the most clever episode they've done to date? These are two of the touchiest subjects you can have. TV censorship, because this Mm -hmm. was was their way of fighting back. This is their way of fighting back against their own critics. But euthanasia. Oh, that's yeah. a, that's huge, and particularly in 1997, you know, tackling some fairly heavy and you know complex topics, yep. uh, some hot button issues. Absolutely. What it also does is it brings that topic of discussion back into the, the spotlight. We need yeah. to discuss this, guys. Why aren't we talking about this? 
Indeed, doing it in a way that's lighthearted but also respectful and uh, rigorous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, um, as we said at the start, maybe not the funniest or most lively episode in this first season of uh, South Park, but definitely one that shows Parker and Stone's storytelling chops, their ability to uh, yeah, address serious issues in a way that is palatable uh, and enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's um it's a really it's a good good episode. Yeah, and and also chock full of fart jokes. It's not necessarily like an over the top shocking episode. It's just solid. Yeah, no, it's got, it's it's got some meat on the bone, mm-hmm. uh, you might say. You know, it's got something you can sink your teeth into. Hello, sir. Postman Butters with a special delivery for you. All right, so we've got a couple of mailbag questions here before we wrap up. Sent into southparkmailbag at gmail.com. If you've got questions for us or just want to send us a message, southparkmailbag at gmail.com. First one here comes from Andy Jakeman. And Andy says, could be a male or female, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to, I think it was a male. What's up, Andy? He says, have you ever had a moment like Kenny does in the classroom where you simply couldn't hold it any longer? Oh. Um, not in the classroom, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, it was away on like a school camp or something like that and had, you know, bad burrito. That's, I think bad burrito is going to be the code word for just, you know, the, the shits. Yeah. Um, the, the squirts. <laughs> yes, for the squirts. Um, and I think we were playing like footy or, you know, uh, British Bulldog. What's that game where you, you know, you try to, you run to, You've got to run to the other end of the field, but other people no, are going to tackle you. And you get like a little tail hanging at the back of your pants, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> but uh, I think I got tackled and yes, hit in just the right spot. That's going, mm, I think I might have to go off to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because, um, yes, I think I might have had a bit of a uh, <laughs> an, an unexpected expulsion. <laughs> I remember... I think I've told this story on the Four Figure Discount podcast. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a poop, but I was at the Pix, the Pixie Theatre, the Pix Theatre in Geelong. The Pix yeah? Theatre. Pix Theatre, yep. Would have been, so it was 1993, Casper movie, so it would have been Ooh. five, maybe four. Mm-hmm. And I was there with the movies with just my dad. And I remember the movie was coming to a close. It would have been probably five, maybe just over five, maybe ten minutes left in the film. Mm-hmm. And I really need to pee. And... I said to dad, I've got to go to the toilet. He goes, oh, just, wait, just wait to the end. I remember saying to dad, I don't think I can. And dad was like, it's nearly finished. Are you going to be all right? And I was like, okay, I'll try. And there came a point in the movie where I was just like, yeah, I can't try anymore, dad. I was just, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was just like, <laughs> it's coming. And it was just, it was coming. And then as I'm walking out, I said, dad go, dad, dad's like, come this way. I'm like, he's like, what are you walking funny for? I said, I'll pee my pants. He's like, what, 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 what? And I was like, it's your fault, Dad. I fucking warned you. I, I, I begged you to let me go to the toilet. I, I begged you. <laughs> <laughs> Piss everywhere, all over the seat. <laughs> oh, no. So that's my story of pissing my pants. Watching Casper, oh. whenever I see Casper now, I think of pissing my pants. <laughs> now but you're, l- you're not cool unless you pee your pants. So <laughs> Exactly. You're, you're the Miles Davis of, uh, of the picks that day. <laughs> I've got to look up when the picks theatre actually closed because I think it might have closed as a result of that. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't have been far off. 1993, Casper <laughs> came out. So, was it 93? Yeah, it was 93, surely. Indeed. Let's look on cinematreasures.org. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it screened films until around the late 1990s. So, I think it got a few more years out before you, um, yeah, after you defiled their seats, <laughs> after you befouled their, uh, the fine auditorium. The poor cleaner was just like, oh, someone spilt the damn Coke on the seat again. <laughs> Yeah, someone spilled that, do you? <laughs> so, last question here just says from Beck. No last name, just Beck. She What's says, Beck? what song on repeat would be torture for you? Oh, golly. Oh. What song. Mm. The song that never ends. <laughs> I, I never liked the band Rock Set. Hmm? So, um, I'm thinking it might be Dressed for Success. Okay. I think if you had, I think if I had to hear that over and over again, I would probably you know, find some way to uh, end, end it all. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of there's there's a song that I okay you're gonna hate me for this right? Good song, great song. I understand it's a great song, but imagine mm-hmm. having to listen to the riff of it all day every day for the rest of your life. I know it's one of your favorite songs, but imagine having to listen to Toto's Africa all day every day. That oh. would drive you mad, right? 
<laughs> do, 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 just on I'd loop. Just, yeah, but I'd be picturing that little dog dancing <laughs> to it. <laughs> Listeners, so, right. So, he goes sit next to me, right, at Pop Culture. And one day, he just breaks out in hysterics. And I look at him, I'm like, what's going on here? And he's watching this little Pomeranian just dancing to Toto's Africa. It was more like a dingo. <laughs> it wasn't... It was a... Um, it was, it was yeah, like, it was, yeah, it was a bigger one. Yeah, that's right. And it was just like... Two, like, so it's got, the dog has four legs. It'd be on its two right and its two left. Like, do, 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 do. Yeah, it was perfectly synced. I was dancing to the riff from uh, from Africa. And you were yeah. just, that was the peak of comedy for you there, that moment. You were just in tears of it, laughter. It was both funny and joyful. Yeah. Um, and it was joyful watching you enjoy it as much as you did. <laughs> but, um, Here we yes. go. Dog dances to Toto's Africa. Yeah. No, that's a different dog. Here it is. Well, this is at home. All they're going to hear is just a really muffled version of Toto's Africa. Oh, and <laughs> I can't see it either. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's 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 worth checking it out. It's it is on YouTube. You can't find it. <laughs> oh, he's just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys, that is our review of Death from South Park's first season. The next episode we're going to be reviewing. Do you know what it is, Mister Davis? I do, but um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it is pink eye <laughs> oh god i remember oh god a, a fair while a, maybe close to 15 years ago mm-hmm. i had this really terrible case of um pink eye yeah a pink eye it was but it was like pink eye on steroids and i mean i i'm pretty sure i didn't get it from you know bad hygiene or anything like that but um, I was really embarrassed sort of say, guy, why are you wearing dark glasses and all that kind of stuff? I'm like, yeah, conjunctivitis. <laughs> Do you not know how to wipe your ass? You're a grown man, don't forget. It's like, it's not that, it's something else. I, well, so I will save this story for the review of Pink Eye. But when I was a child and this episode of Pink Eye came out, a rumor went around the schoolyard on how you catch Pink Eye, right? And in our minds, this was the only way you could catch Pink Eye. It's pretty damn hilarious. <laughs> I'll tell you next week in the next episode what the children of North Shore Primary School thought was the only way you were able to catch Pink Eye. <laughs> I also have more to my Pink Eye story, so tune in yes, for the next uh, Going Down to South Park for tales of medical misadventure from Dando and myself. But thank you for tuning in to this episode of Going Down to South Park. I hope you are enjoying the show. Don't forget, if you haven't yet, please jump onto Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. We would love to hear what you think of the show. You can also send in a question to southparkmailbag at gmail.com. It doesn't have to be a question. You just tell us what you think of the show. We'd love that. But yes, please jump onto Apple uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, give us some five-star reviews. It would really help us boost up the rankings on there and more people can find the show. And if you've got friends who like South Park, share the show with them. And the more listeners, the better it is. Don't forget, like I said, southparkmailbag at gmail.com. And if you want to support the show, the best way to do so is by being a four-finger discount patron. So four-finger discount mm. is our network where all these shows we do fall under. Um, we do The Simpsons Show, Seinfeld Show, Friends Show, The South Park Show, and much, much more. And you get early access to all of those, access to our exclusive four-finger discount Patreon group. You get uh, access to a bunch of exclusive podcasts on there as well, monthly Zoom calls with Guy and myself, and much, much more. There's prize draws and everything uh, for as little as just $1 per month. Just $1 per month. It all adds up. It all helps the show. And we can invest in some new gear, which we've been doing recently. We bought some new microphones and booms and a Rodecaster Pro for ourselves and everything like that. So all the money that you send in does go towards the show and helps us improve the show for yes, for you guys because we love you guys so thank you yeah. once again for tuning in you're all absolute champions Mr. Davis any final words for those amazing listeners out there Mungo says making podcasts is pretty cool <laughs> <laughs>